Alright, let's uh, see what's in this box. I'm not actually satisfied with this camera, I'm actually seriously considering buying a better camera. Okay, interesting packaging, but I wouldn't say it's good packaging. It's probably right, but rattling around inside the box, it's not very good packaging at all. More security cameras, and I think they're all the same again. Typical 8 mil lens, and again, so I have to check because I don't remember what I purchased, I've purchased all sorts of things. So at least all 2.8mm lens ones, so they're really wide angle. So they're good for sitting in a like a corner of a room or something like that, you stick up in the corner, and it will cover the whole room. Obviously you get uh, smaller detail, you know, things are a lot smaller, but being as these are, um, I think they're 4 megapixel cameras, it doesn't really matter, because you've still got heaps of resolution. You can just zoom right in, it's not a problem. Better than the old analogue days anyway. CD comes with software on it, and the camera will look exactly the same as what I showed previously. Yeah, yeah. it's the same. It's no different, it's exactly the same. Just a uh, different lens set up on it. That's all it is. So, I won't bore you showing that again. But it's eight PoE cameras, so you plug on the Ethernet cable, which has got power over it. 48 volts typically. It powers the camera, you don't have to plug 12 volts in. I think I've got enough now. Yeah, I think I have. I've got quite a few. Alright, so, let's see what's in this box. And here we go. Video light. It's got these fold out things which I'm probably not going to use anyway. It's supposed to be a fairly high Cree or CRI rating light. It's supposed to be. And it's got some. It takes a battery option on the back there. It also run DC power into it too. And that's what I was actually wanting was a DC power version. Uh, specs. It's supposed to have a CRI of 95 apparently, so, which is exactly what I need for this um, kind of thing. Uh, battery option is a Sony NP-FM slash QM, which you can use on these to battery power it, so you can use it as a camera mounted light, although it would be pretty bloody heavy to have that hang off your camera, wouldn't it? But anyway. Um, Lumens. Now, which one was this? Which model was this one? That's the 340A. So that's this one here. It's supposed to be 1600 lumen. That's all right. Well, I'll set this up somehow on my bench, and I'll use that for the videos, and hopefully it'll help to improve the lighting a bit more. I'm having trouble getting it bright enough, but I'm trying to use a broad enough focal distance. So if I'm trying to set a broad focal distance, so I can focus on the desk and about here. Um, I use, have to use quite a large F setting and what I'm finding is that that makes everything a bit dark and it's affecting the colour addition and stuff like that so because um, the aperture size isn't quite right for doing that kind of work with good lighting. The lighting here that I've got quite a bit here already isn't enough for the aperture setting so I'm trying to add more lighting because um, I need that wide focal distance range. Um, if I cannot get this lighting and the camera to, to work well together I'm seriously considering getting a different camera. Like uh, Dave Jones has recently done at the EV blog, he's gone to a 4K video camera. That is something which is tempting, I have to say. I might do the same kind of thing and just go to a, a high-end video camera like that. Well, maybe not too high-end. I have to better buy it after all. Again, this is sort of stuff which you guys don't necessarily realise um, I have to spend just to produce the content, you know. Um, the camera I'm using now, that was $1,000. Right, I have to pay for that. The amount of money I've earned from YouTube, uh, yeah, it's probably less than that. So, you know, it's costing money. Um, plus, all the test gear and stuff I buy and what have you. Uh, also, has this sheet thing, where's that for? Some filter. So, look in there. So, that's why I'm trying to always push to get new Patreons and new supporters because doing the videos is an expensive hobby. So, no, I do appreciate the support where I can get it. So I've got a couple of diffusing filters. That might be a good one actually, helping the colours out. 
do you think? If we don't know that white light. That's not bad, is it? Hmm. Promising. I'll set this up and have a prayer of it. That's why I want more people to support me because it costs money to do this stuff and if I buy a high end video camera to do this kind of work then I'm looking at a couple of grand at least. I've got this one hoping this will do the job you know, as a cheaper option to, to upgrade from what I was using which was my cell phone although that seemed to work quite well. Um, I wanted you know options like zooming and that sort of stuff a bit better and higher quality but um, I'm struggling getting that adequate, I suppose you could say. Oh, so I thought I'd have a little play around with the light. I've got it plugged into a supply. It's actually a 12 volt supply, not 9 volt. Hopefully it doesn't matter. It may do. <laughs> but, uh, so I'm going to see how the lighting comes out. Things of colours and let's try and give you some idea about how it looks. Okay, here you go. So I'm currently using two lights. One's like a yellowish, one's a white. I can't remember what bloody colours actually are. I'm going to turn those off. Oh, off. That's now just on the yellow light. I'll turn the other one off. And let's turn this one on. I'll find the switch. Okay. As you can see, it's very shaded, very directional light, you know, because of the angle it's at. But the camera's probably slightly better. Right, and that's just the plain white. Um, white balance is probably affecting things, or all the white balance and um, auto ISO settings are probably affecting that actually. And put a filter in front. So we get in. If I put the diffusing filter in front, and get that. Okay, so it works. Hand color. Hand color diffusing filter. Hmm. I don't know, we'll see. I'll set these up somehow and once I've got a couple of them set up it'll probably be a little bit better. I think it's actually affecting the ISO settings, see it fading back up. Maybe I'll just do manual ISO, hold on. Right. So if I do that's 800 ISO. That's no extra lights. This is one well, of my lights has got effectively three colours on it. So this is one of the ones I usually use. That's the other one also running. This is the lighting setup I usually have running. I add this one to it. Turn that one off. Turn that one off. So it's just that one now. So I don't know. It's a bit hard to judge really, isn't it? But I'm going to have to have a couple of these. And on the back of it, it's got this dial which wasn't turned right up before. If I turn it up, it's now sort of full brightness. About there. So I'm actually going to, it's actually going past full brightness, so I'm going to go higher and um, on that knob there, go to the point, it actually flickers a bit and, and doesn't gain any more brightness. I think that's where I'm topping out on voltage because I've got that 12 volt supply, 7 9 volt supply. So I've done an overdrive those LEDs. But, uh, yeah, it's not that bad, is it? I think it's certainly brighter than the other lights I've been using. So it's got some good potential. Stick a couple of those up there. And it should improve it quite a bit. Right, so I set the light up on top of the camera here. And I've got my little lux meter out. Just to give us a rough indication of what it's actually doing. Now, obviously this isn't ideal. It's what's it, probably two feet away from it just over two feet um, so you know obviously when you get closer you get a higher reading so the lux definition should be you know, on distance right so there it's you know 300 but here it's 500 and I think this is also with my normal room lights on as well so this is you know, 360 or so with the room lights blocked you see the shadow going across and this is with this turned right down now I've, all, I've got uh, fixed exposure on the camera but ISO 800 right now so let's turn this up and yeah let's try and get it so you can see it there you go all right let's check the last level again so it's about 370 there bring it right up 
So yeah, that's about 15. Peaks about 15. So like I said, it dips off a bit when I go too fast. So I think it's actually overdriving because of the high voltage you're running at. So it's about 1500 there. And if I I put it down so I don't want to drive it too hard. Let's just do 1200. If I stick on my other secondary lights, there you go, jumps up a bit, and another one. All right, so that's what I'm getting now with that 18 or so, 1800 or so right there. All right, and if we go off to the side, it's about 16 that side, 13 that side, so it's a bit varied. The edge here, about 16, towards the back, about 18, so it's not too bad at the back. Okay, so it's not too bad, it's fairly even. So if I turn this off and go to our normal, back to normal lights um, range, that's 600 normally <laughs> with these lights. I think that's it. As you can see, I've changed colours on this one over here. I tend to do the slight yellow one. I'm not sure which, I can't remember what the bloody colour indexes are those. Uh, so that's only 600 normally, so this is actually quite a lot brighter using this other light, even if I have it turned right down. Yeah, right down the other way. You know, so that's quite a big difference there between having it on and off. So I've got another one of these on the way, I'm going to have two of them, so I'm going to mount them on the bench somehow, and I'll use those as bench lighting. Um, oh, the other light I've got is one, I've got LED strip light ones across here, uh, underneath the shelf. Let's turn that on. Let's see what that does for it. Another hundred. You know, it doesn't do a lot. It does more over here, I think, probably. Yeah, so it's a bit better towards the back there. This fills it, it actually lights up that shelf, which is above here, um, which you can't see currently, where my oscilloscopes are. It lights that shelf up really well. So it seems to work fine, um, even running 12 volts instead of 9 volts. So if you care not turn it right up, I think. Once I get the other lights set up, I'll mount them on the bench here, probably having all set up nicely and I'll run a power supply for them which will be run it, running at the correct voltage so I don't overdrive them. Let's have a set of in here. Stuff that's out of stock of course, even though it's all supposed to be in stock when I order it off the website. Of course. Well, let's see what she arrived. There's a IAC connector with a switch and IAC connectors with fuse holders. And this is probably the one I wanted to get. Now this is actually for my leakage tester project. So the idea here is that I can mount that on the back of the panel. Bring it over. Yeah. So hopefully it actually fit in there. All right. So the idea is it'll sit on the back of the panel, probably around there somewhere like that. I can wire it straight in. I won't be doing it actually, and just sold them together. Mm, it's probably a bad idea. Uh, and I've got this board here on quite big standoffs. I might actually um, change that, but anyway, that's the plan. Is that's going to go on the back of that board? I mean, it doesn't hit anything, so I can send it back. Have a nice connector on the back with an internal fuse. And it's all nice and tidy and easy, you can use any cable then, so if you have no hardwire or cable to it. 